gang, welcome back to your next statics lesson. Now we're talking about vector language. What? I didn't know vectors could talk. No, this is just some language that you might hear when we discuss things about vectors. Number one, you might hear concurrent vector forces. What does that mean, concurrent vector forces? Well, it's two or more vectors going to the same point. So that's something like, um, here you go, right? Here's a point and here's vector F1 and maybe there's F2, and there's F3. Those are concurrent vector forces. They're all to the same point, okay? The next thing you might hear is something like coplanar vector forces. Two or more vectors in the same plane. Now here's a question for you. If I have two vectors and they're concurrent, right? They're, they start at the same point. Will they always be in the same plane? Hmm. So what's like one was going that way and one was going that way? Well, yeah, there's a plane that would contain both of them, isn't it? What about like that and like that? Yep, there's a plane that contains those. But what about three vectors? Are they always in the same plane? Well, no, because then you could have one this way, one that way, and then one that way. And there's no way you can contain that in the same plane. Now, these three vectors are in the same plane, right? They're in the plane of the board. But when you get two vectors, are all, if they're concurrent, they're always in the same plane. But if you get three, maybe, maybe not. I don't know, okay? And then the next one is the resultant of vector forces. The resultant. What is a resultant? That's when you add things together, you get the resultant, okay? So it's a single vector representing or replacing two or more vector forces, okay? So, and that's what we're gonna do next because chapter two is all about adding vectors together, okay? So typically you'll see the resultant vector like this, vector R, okay? Or maybe a capital R, it doesn't matter, okay? So let's say that R is gonna equal vector A plus vector B, okay? Now let's just, for fun here, let's just assign a magnitude to A and to B, and I'll put it over here, and, and we're going to talk about several different cases of how you add vectors together. In all of these cases, we'll use the same magnitude for A, same magnitude for B, okay? So we'll say that vector A's magnitude, remember those two lines just mean the magnitude, it won't have direction, just magnitude, it, and let's say that's five pounds, okay? And vector B is seven pounds pounds, okay? So, I've got those two vectors, I want to add them together, all right? Here's, here's the different kind of cases that we might see. Case number one, okay? You've got this, vector A, vector B. There's, oh, I said it backwards, didn't I? There's vector B, this is vector A, okay? So, what is Vector A plus vector B. Okay, so this is you, that is business school buddy, right? And me and business school buddy, or our car ran out of gas, we're on, both on the back of it, we're both pushing in the same directions. So don't our efforts just add together if you're pushing in the same direction? They do, because both of those, we could say, if you remember from the last video, are on, dun 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 dun, the same line of action, 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 okay? So in this case, vector R, is equal to a, well, let's, vector a plus vector b, which is, um, just add them together, five plus seven. So, vector r is equal to nine plus seven, 12. Okay, remember, hashtag is pounds, okay? So 12 pounds, is that right? Is that right? Is that right? Huh, well, what's on this side of the equal sign? A vector. So what's on that side? Not a vector. Uh-oh, those aren't the same, are they? Whatever you got on one side, you got to have on the other side. That's not a vector. So it has magnitude, so it needs some, needs some direction, doesn't it? Okay, so this is a little symbol that we typically draw to denote direction. It's just at an angle of, and this could reference a lot of things, right? This is telling me, if I have a coordinate system, it's telling me from the x-axis, right, that that vector is referenced this way. Now I could give you this. Oh, I could do this, couldn't I? What if I gave you that? Well, that means that from straight down, right, come off this way and measure, okay? So this is a neat little tool that, that kind of 
because you can write a, an angle a million different ways, right? And so this just kind of helps us understand. It's a communication tool, okay? And if you didn't write anything, I'm just going to assume, because this is zero, and this is 90 degrees, right? 180, and this is 270. I'm going to assume, if you just said 37 degrees, I'm going to go, okay, there's zero, boom, up 37, it's there, right? So unless you tell me different, that's the way I'm going to assume it, okay? So what is the, what is the uh, angle here? Well, they're both going in the positive x direction, which we know is zero degrees, okay? So zero degrees. Now this, this is the answer for this problem. This is called, it's where the white bears live, <laughs> polar notation, okay? That's polar notation. That's the, it's a, it's a vector given with a magnitude and a direction, okay? There's case one. How simple is that? That's too easy, isn't it? Let's talk about case two. Okay. Case two, I'm still adding A plus B. Okay. Now, I'm trying to push the car to the gas station, and look at this. Business school buddy is on. You said push the car. He's on the front of the car pushing. What are you doing? Okay, here we go. How do I add this together? Well, let's see, they're still on the same exact line of action, so just add them together, except the sense of the vector here is in the negative direction, so he's going to be negative. So actually this time it's going to be A, which is 5, minus 7, which is 5 minus 7 is minus 2 pounds. So vector R is equal to minus two pounds, ooh, not a vector, at an angle of, okay, now what? Uh-oh, what now? Okay, here's your choices, okay? It's negative two. Is it zero or is it 180? Hmm, I don't know. It is, I'm telling you, it's zero, okay? Because, why? Well, because of the negative sign, right? Here's zero degrees, it's telling me go negative two. Well, that's that way, right? And if I said it was 180, if I was 180 and then go negative two, then it says go that way. It's almost like a double negative, right? We have to put 180 there. So this would be the correct answer. Again, there's my vector in polar notation, okay? Polar notation. Let's do one more. Okay. We're going to do case number, well, the name, case number three, okay? Okay, so let me erase this. Give us some room here. Give me some room, man. Okay, case number three. Same two vectors. Still adding them together here. I almost lost my deal there. Uh, okay, here you are. Push the car to the gas station. What are you doing, business school buddy? He's under the car now, pushing straight up on the car. What are you doing? You said push on it. Okay, so how do I do this? How do I add two vectors if they're not on the same line of action? Okay, we have to use a little trick here. We have to go back and remember this. The triangle rule, okay? Now you might remember the triangle rule, but you might not. You might remember a para Parallelogram, parallel, I can't even spell that, parallela, parallela, is that right? That's not right, gram, parallel, parallel, two L's, one L, parallelogram rule, oh my goodness, my brain just quit working right there. Okay, or you may hear it called, probably this is the one you remember, the tip to tail rule, okay? They're all the same thing. And no matter where you hear it, what you hear, those three things there, all the same thing. So no matter how you hear it, uh, they all do the same thing. They say, it says this, take one vector and then take the second vector and move his tail to the tip of the first vector. So we would go over here and we have this, okay, B. 
and now you could have moved, you could have taken this vector and put it to the end of this vector, right? Because you would just get this. Hey, now you see why they call it a parallelogram because then you take the start of the first vector and you connect it to the end of the second vector and that is your vector r. That is the resultant of those two vectors. So you could go up here and over or over here and up. It doesn't matter because you get to the same point, don't you? Okay, so here we go. This is a right angle. Um, and we remember that B is 7, okay, and A is 5. So, what do we need? We need to find out how big R is. Well, okay, that looks like a right triangle to me, and I remember something about right triangles. I remember uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or in our case, A squared plus B squared equals R squared, doesn't it? Okay, so that would be 5 squared plus 7 squared square root is equal to R, and so R equals calculator. Okay, so 5 squared plus 7 squared equals square root of the answer 8.60. Okay. So, vector R is equal to 8.60 pounds. Oh, yeah. I definitely need some direction here. I do need some direction in my life. Okay, and the direction is, here's horizontal, and the direction is this angle right here, okay? We'll call it theta. So, how do I find angle theta? Oh, yeah. So, Katoa, right? Let's see, what do I know? I know the opposite side and I know the adjacent side. Ooh, how about tangent? Tan of theta is equal to opposite, seven, divided by adjacent, five. Okay, here we go. Seven divided by five equals, and then inverse tan, inverse tan of the answer is equal to 54.5 degrees. So theta equals 54.5 degrees, okay? so. 54.5 degrees, and that is how you do that, okay? And that's adding vectors together. So we did when they're on the same line of action, different directions, and then they're 90 degrees. But what if they're not 90 degrees? Come back next time. It's going to get harder, okay? Here we go. Come back and see the next video.